Rifkin made quick decisions this morning on the size and the scope of that protective order in the criminal case surrounding Donald Trump's alleged attempts to overturn the 2020 election. In a ruling from the bench, Judge Chutkin, after prosecutors argued that the order was necessary to prevent pretrial publicity, and the defense countered that the special counsel's parameters were extraordinary, decided that the protective order would only apply to sensitive materials and not to all of the evidence turned over to them from the special counsel. Judge Chutkin also added a clause to the order that would limit the universe of people who are allowed to review those discovery materials. And in discussing Mr. Trump's social media postings and the order, the judge saying to attorney John Morrow, quote, your client's defense is supposed to happen in this courtroom, not on the internet. The former president has publicly pushed back on having any protective order and is also lashing out at special counsel Jack Smith's proposal to begin the trial in early January, slamming Smith, quote, as an out of touch lunatic, committing maximum election interference, he said, for choosing a date just two weeks away from the Republican Iowa caucuses. Joining me now, NBC's Garrett Haig, NBC investigations correspondent Tom Winter, and former U.S. attorney Joyce Vance. So Tom Winter, first to you, take us through all of what we learned from the producers inside the courtroom and an adjacent overflow room, including whether Trump can review those materials alone. Right. So, Andrea, this was a, a hearing that typically we wouldn't even report on. We might just attend and send a note in later. But given the public interest in this case involving the former president and given the issues here and how much of a megaphone Donald Trump has, this uh, hearing uh, took extra importance today. And it's basically all about what evidence that is going to be shared from federal prosecutors during the scope of their investigation with the defense, what evidence can be shared or can perhaps be made public out of that leading up to the trial date. And a protective order is not uncommon in criminal cases, but here there was a pretty wide gulf between the two sides of federal prosecutors saying, look, everything's protected, nothing can be disclosed. That's what they were arguing for. And the defense was saying, well, wait a minute, we, we should be able to, to disclose some things. We're going to have to interview people. We're going to have to talk to people about what they said. And so perhaps you can make it more about certain sensitive of documents uh, that might pertain to certain witnesses, uh, personal identifying information, things like that. And the judge uh, made an oral ruling and should dock it later today, the specifics of what she has in mind. But basically, uh, from our producer Daniel Barnes in the courtroom, the judge says, look, there'll be certain sensitive things that the, the defense, including Donald Trump, cannot disclose under any circumstances. But there'll be other things that uh, can be asked about, talked about, and presumably, uh, perhaps, if the defense wants uh, or Trump wants to be made public prior to trial. Uh, to your specific question there, Andrea, the idea of what Donald Trump can review, a prosecutor said that he should not be allowed to review evidence alone, uh, that he should not be allowed to take notes or take documents by himself, even kind of uh, winking and nodding towards the Florida case, saying he has a habit of taking documents that he shouldn't take. And so uh, that, uh, that review by the former president, he'll have to have some restrictions on, on how he reviews evidence uh, and that's something that uh, he might have to do with his attorneys as well. Again, more details will come out in the judge's order. What will start to happen here once this all gets hammered out, Andrea, is 11.6 million pages of documents will be handed over from the special counsel's office to Donald Trump's defense attorneys, including, uh, ex according to our notes, uh, extraction from devices, which is a fancy way of saying uh, images from cell phones. So basically, the, uh, it appears at this point that they're either cell phones or computers, laptops, et cetera, that uh, federal prosecutors and investigators have gotten their hands on in the course of this investigation. And they image those devices, make, and it's not a perfect term for it, but, but try to make the best copy possible. It's better than just copying the device and handing it over to the defense. That's something that uh, happens in, in every case uh, where that type of investigative work has been done. So a lot of information coming to the former president's attorneys uh, and to the former president. We'll get all the specifics laid out uh, a little bit later today. That's the plan, at least. That's what the judge said in court. And then from there, we go to the trial. Uh, one other potential uh, issue here, the judge happened, and we just got this quote, the judge said, even arguably ambiguous statements by the parties or their counsel, if they could be reasonably interpreted to intimidate witnesses or to prejudice potential jurors, can threaten the process. And the judge noted that the more those statements are made, the faster they will go to trial. So uh, clearly the judge uh, letting the defense know and the defendant, the former president of the United States, 
exactly where she stands on the issue. Andrea? Wow, that's all I can say. You know, Joy's fans, let's talk about this. First of all, uh, there was a quick agreement on a protective order. For all the fuss about a protective order, there was a quick agreement in Florida on both sides in the classified documents case, and I believe one also in Manhattan. So the fact that this was such a big deal early on from the defense side uh, seems extraordinary and possibly for delay. Joyce, as a former prosecutor, what is your take? So I think you dead on the money. These are routine. There was always going to be a, a protective order imposed in this case. The question was just how long Trump's lawyers could drag it out for. And, and you know, Judge Chutkin, who today admonished the parties against permitting a carnival-like atmosphere to take over this case, understands what's going on here. She's issued a very moderate ruling. She gave the Trump camp some of what they wanted only sensitive documents fall within the ambit of the protective order but by the same token sensitive documents will include anything that the government received from agencies other than doj that includes anything that they received from january 6 hearing materials so there's there's a win here for both sides but mostly an end to trump's efforts to delay this process and just a quick question what about grand jury testimony that's not from that's from witnesses but not from other agencies is that sensitive or does that have to be decided on a case-by-case -case basis at sidebar let's say with the judge no the grand jury material will all fall within the protective order it can be used at trial it becomes public then but at this point that will remain confidential and and judge chutkin is very clear about this you know if there is something arguably wrong that happens that could for instance prejudice the future jury or could impact the safety of witnesses. She said in no certain terms today uh, that she will hold the Trump team accountable even if something ambiguous takes place. And Garrett, what do you think is happening behind the scenes uh, with Donald Trump being told that he can't take his phone or any devices in when he's reading these materials and that the lawyers have to be outside. Well, look, something like a no phones while you're in the room uh, rule that might actually be enforced. But I think there's pretty wide recognition between Trump's inner circle and the wider circle of people who support him that the idea that he's going to follow a protective order about talking about this case broadly, the way the judge described it, anything that could be reasonably interpreted as, you know, malicious or as meant to influence this case. There is zero percent chance that Donald Trump is going to avoid anything that could be reasonably interpreted as trying to influence this case. He and his allies firmly believe this is only political. They have certainly cast this case as entirely political, and they're going to continue to make political arguments about it. This order will launch a thousand segments on cable television talking about which thing Donald Trump said today could be reasonably interpreted to break the judge's order. The, this judge will be tested on this point. And how is she going to enforce it? That's an excellent question. I mean, typically, uh, enforcement on something like this, you could be held in contempt, you could be fined, you could be locked up. Uh, good it's luck. out on bail. She says, she, you know, she's going to treat this like any other case. Uh, she's not taking political considerations in mind here. But I think, again, in the practical world, that's going to be very difficult to enforce.